All right, now we're gonna make foam. We're gonna make this thing work, but Matt brought up a really good point. Um, it's kind of cool to see how it works. And I think the problems we've been having is that we didn't know how it worked, and we didn't necessarily know, I can stand in the middle, we didn't necessarily know how to, uh, how the foam pros worked or the aqueous worked either, but we sort of knew the process. And this is a different process. It's that pressure piece, it's a venturi, not so much an injection. Um, yeah, it's just different. So I think that most of the problems we're running in, we have run into so far, are explained by us not knowing how the process worked. So, how do we make foam? Um, flushing gnarly fast foam. Okay, so the instructions on the inside are just for flushing. We'll deal with flushing another time, maybe in a minute, maybe not. Um, we're just gonna make foam. So, if we need to make foam, we gotta make sure that our supply, well, there's no valve in our supply up there, but we want to make sure our return valve, which is that right there, lever is open. Our supply lever, lever, toggle, twist, I don't know, valve is open, okay? And then I come in here and I make sure I am on uh, foam inject on the bottom three-way and tank return on the top three-way. Okay, that should be able to, all that should be able to sit as is all the time. Um, we don't in general need to make that, you know, do anything differently. It, it should be able to just sit like that all the time. Okay, and then we need to fire up our pump. At the moment, that's closed, that's closed, that's fine. Better pressure override. Pressure override doesn't appear to work. Okay. I got pressure now. The gauge is showing pressure. There's 150 PSI and pull up once I turn it on. I'm gonna run it at 0.9, almost 1%, just for the sake of doing it. It should be super foamy because we were just playing around with it. There's a bunch of foam in the system. So let's spray for a minute or two here and make sure that we actually get foam. I gotta shade the camera because it's getting too hot. Open that thing up like all the way to 30 gallon a minute. Go, there you go. I want to see that I still have concentrate or foam solution coming out after a bit. Obviously it takes a while to run any concentrate out of that system, but it appears we're making bubbles, right? Oh yeah, we're still making bubbles. And that's it, it's working. So go ahead and shut that guy down. Okay, so I've turned the pump off. Off. I no longer have pressure in that system, right? Well, yeah, I do. Because I was just running it at 150 psi. So there's residual pressure. And you can hear, probably hear it without opening. You can hear, you can see the foam pump still running. But that foam pump is just pumping it back into the tank. It's not pumping it into the discharge. It's got the same pressure as is in this system to the Venturi. But with no water flowing, there's no venturi happening. So it's not injecting. It's just recirculating it back in. Okay. Um, so boy, that's irritating. I want to listen to that. 
I wonder how long it takes to turn it off. How long it takes to turn itself off? Yeah. I don't know if it does. Okay. I mean, we, we can test it. I certainly didn't ask that question. Right. It's not designed to turn itself off necessarily. So that's, um, okay. At least nowhere that I've seen. The, the system would theoretically recircle, recirculate for yeah. quite a while unless it got hot and turned itself off for some sort of safety reason. So because if you... Now the other option is... Yeah. Yeah. You know, the other option is if you open something and you reduce that pressure, which we'll do here in just a minute, if you pop the pressure off the system, then it's not going to... I mean, that's not going to keep it What's that? Can you do it from the live reel? Yeah. You'd be able to do it from the live reel. Okay. Um, so the number one problem that, that we've noticed is the first thing I've seen with it was that we're standing here and the foam pump's still running. And it's like, oh God, it's pumping foam into it. Well, it's not pumping foam into it. We didn't understand how it worked. Um, so we're hearing that foam pump going and we're going, oh God, it's broken. It's in SimFlow mode because we're all familiar with SimFlow mode. Um, that's not the case. Not the case at all. So then we start messing around and there's only one switch. So I go, oh, I got to turn the SimFlow mode off, right? And I start messing around with that one switch. And then I think what's happening when people were getting issues where I had this big gob of yeah. That foam injected. Well, we just proved that we can prime that system using the override. Mm -hmm. The override's going to force it in there. So they were hitting that. Right? I think they were messing around with that. I know I was. Yeah. So I think they were messing around with that. And they were getting a big gob of foam in there. And they were overpressurizing the system. And Matt, the other Matt, yep. um, had an issue where he uh, he said it, it got so, the pressure was so high in the uh, library that he couldn't get the, the um, live reel off or the nozzle off. This one's so. just. Uh, I think I can see if I jump up on top, I can see the. If the foam is actually going back into the tank. Okay. Because it's low enough. Yeah, let's, let's try it. Ready? So you're just going to see some swirling probably. It's starting to move. Okay. So it's circulating back in. Now, if I drop the pressure in the system, uh, I should, it should turn itself off. Because if the pressure is below 10 PSI, it's not going to work. I think maybe I can do it right here. Nope. Because it's past the check valve. So. If it had been plumbed the way that it was in the directions, it'd be before the check valve and open to the number two. We should have dropped enough pressure. Turn itself off? Turn itself off because we depressurized the system. The system got below that 10 PSI. Well, why doesn't the gauge read the residual pressure? I don't know. It just doesn't. Um, I think the residual pressure gets trapped past those check valves. <laughs> 10 PSI or maybe it's going to Yeah. So. That would be, I haven't turned it off yet, I'm kind of curious what happens here. Um, that could be water flowing back in and maybe it's only set to five PSI. They, they weren't exactly sure, but they were saying it has to have some pressure to kick off at all. Um, he was thinking it was 10. He said it might be higher. Um, it could be as low as five. But, uh, well, what's our um, pressure override set to for our well, that's pressure? A Shouldn't that be higher than that? Yeah. Wouldn't you want that? Yeah, kind of. Um, they're, they're independent systems, so I don't I know. think it matters. But, but so, I'm saying you would want that to be higher so that would kick off when this kicks off. This this thing was, uh, I'm not sure this is working at the moment. 
No. No, there's a um, also an override for it. An override for yeah, it? Yeah, so... Um, Double override it? You're like, first time you do it, you don't have to turn this on. Oh, on the new system. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool, I, I was unaware of that. Yeah, I just out of habit, I still always hit it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the, should it be lower than... I don't know, maybe it is. But I mean, I'm not like, sure what those are down to. But wouldn't that make sense? You would want... So when this, when your pump kicks off, that pressure would be... Um, lower than the pressure for this one to kick off because then you won't No, have because this is going to match pressure down to about 10, 5 or 10 psi. Um, or you would want to do this, the same. Even if this is set at 3, this is what, what kills the pump. Right. If the pump's making any pressure at all, this is pushing at that pressure. Right. All the rest of it goes back in the tank. What I'm trying to say is you would want them both to kick off, though. They will both kick off because once this one kicks off, it doesn't. So that will still, that's higher pressure than this is. Because when my, when I drain the tank, this kicks off, this still runs. Because, so that's because there's still pressure in the system here. Okay. Yeah. It's so, part of the check valve, so that's why you... Yeah, okay, watch, I'll demonstrate. Right. So. Uh, So I can idle down and kill it, so it's set at like 10. Um, what I need to do here is I need to correct some stuff that Noss and I were doing. Um, or I need to make some video corrections. The sun right in it. Yeah, the sun's got we can No, no, that's okay. So, um, when Matt and I were working on uh, trying to figure out the whole shutoff thing and why it shuts off at one pressure or at another pressure. Um, you can do all the camera work. You'd like. Yeah, yep. That's great. Um, we kind of got cut off. Camera shut off and uh, we totally left that open without closing the loop and both of us were pretty much wrong on, on several items. Now we got to figure it out. So when it comes down to where's pressure stored in this system, it's uh, if I fire up this pump and you guys run this pump recently? Or has it it's drained running. out of water? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna do it then. Uh, uh, okay. it's coming, it's coming. It's coming down. I think it's I went the wrong way. Okay, that's it's all. fine. Yeah. Yeah, I just went the wrong way with the yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. The thingamajigger, that's all. Okay, so I got it up to 200 psi, right? And when I pressurize the uh, the manifold, I get 200 psi on everywhere. Pressure is equal in all directions as long as the valves are open. So I got ps or 200 psi everywhere. Now, what we find is that um, you guys can come on up here so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, this is a check valve, right? So check valve right here, the check valve back here. Okay, forward of those check valves, I still have 200 PSI in there, okay? Um, coming up this guy, I still have 200 PSI in there. 200 PSI going out the live reels, yada yada. Um, but why doesn't my gauge say 200 PSI? 
okay? Because the gauge takes a measurement here. I don't know, maybe it'll see it. Maybe I'll get lucky. Um, off the top of the pump. And off the top of the pump, um, why do I lose pressure there? Because it's a centrifugal pump, there's no check valve coming all the way back. That water pressure can escape backwards into the tank. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like it's moving a bunch of volume, it's just moving a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. So I have no pressure here. So if I open this guy up, I haven't really lost or bled off any pressure. This is the number two. Mm -hmm. I still have pressure here. If I crack this, I still mm -hmm. have pressure, mm -hmm. right? So when I fire that guy up like that, it's still measuring the pressure off of this, even though there's no pressure back behind it. Gotcha. And even though I haven't run you guys through how this foam system works yet, um, that would make sense if you'd watch the rest of this video that I'm inserting a chunk into here. So you still have that pressurized piece forward of this. And to make it turn off, I can force it to turn off. Oh gosh, let me get wet. But you don't want to move. And the camera. And the camera. Careful. Ready? Yeah. And it turned off. Gotcha. Because the pressure dropped below 10 PSI. Gotcha. That would be the key that I was trying to get to come back to from all the conversations we were having before is the pressure forward of the check valves doesn't go down until you relieve it out here with a discharge. So, okay, that should cover